new boss had arrived on the island of Sodor. His name was Bertie, and he was very excited. Before you start work, said the bus manager, go for a drive and learn your way around. Get to know everyone first. Yes, sir, I will, sir. Soon, Bertie was weaving his way along the village roads. He tooted happily to everyone he met. What fun it all is, he thought. He reached a market town and stopped for a rest. There he saw a funny looking machine being hitched to a trailer. Hello, said Bertie, who are you? I'm Terence, who are you? I'm Bertie, I'm new here. What sort of car are you? I'm not a car, I'm a tractor, laughed Terence. I help to plough fields and do odd jobs. I'm helping the farmer get ready for winter. When it starts to snow, there won't be much work for me to do until spring. Until spring, cried Bertie. You poor thing. I'll be carrying passengers, and I can do that the whole year round. Goodbye. And he sped away. Later, Bertie was on his way home when he met Terence again. Terence was blocking his way. Hurry up, tooted Bertie. I can't hurry up, called Terence. This is as fast as I can go. Bertie was cross. He had to wait until Terence had turned off the road into a field. Silly tractor, he grumbled. You're too big and slow and lazy. Stick to your muddy fields in future. Terence took no notice. Before long, Bertie was kept very busy, taking passengers from the villages to the town. Sometimes he'd see Terence working in the fields, but Bertie said nothing more to him. Time passed and the weather grew colder. Sure enough, it did snow. Bertie wasn't worried. In the town, men dug the snowdrifts and laid down grit to melt the ice. This is easy. Snow is no trouble at all. Then one day, the manager had an important job for Bertie. A tank engine called Thomas is stuck in a snowdrift. Can you rescue his passengers, please? Right away, sir, said Bertie eagerly. He left the town and headed into the countryside. But the snow had become thicker and deeper. Bertie's tyres did not like the slippery ice. Before long, he had to stop. It's no good, said his driver. If we go any further, we'll get stuck too. Oh dear, groaned Bertie. How will we help the passengers now? Then they heard a familiar chugging sound. Hello there, called Terence. Having trouble with the snow? Don't worry, we'll get you through. Using his snow plough, Terence began to push the snow aside. Then his driver spread rock salt onto the road to melt the ice. Carefully, Bertie followed after him. At last, they reached the tunnel where Thomas was stuck. The passengers were pleased to see them. Thank you, Terence, said Bertie. I'm sorry I was rude. That's all right, smiled Terence. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have another job to do. Bertie watched as Terence helped to pull Thomas out of the snowdrift. Talk about odd jobs, he remarked. What a useful tractor Terence is. And he brought the passengers home without any more trouble at all.
The big engines had been naughty, so the fat controller asked Thomas and Edward to look after the main line. But sir, said Thomas, what about my branch line? Don't worry, said the fat controller. Our new tank engine will look after any Clarabelle. His name is Percy. Please show him what to do. Thomas was surprised to see Percy. You're so small, he puffed. Have you ever pulled a train before? No, replied Percy. The fat controller brought me here to shunt trucks. It must be exciting to pull a proper train. Oh, it is, said Thomas grandly. I've been doing it for years. Pay attention, little Percy, and you'll do well. Percy tried hard to remember everything that Thomas told him. And make sure you're on time at the junction, Thomas added. The fat controller won't be pleased if you're late. I will, peeped Percy. <laughs> the following morning, Percy brought Annie and Clarabelle to the station. He was so excited, he kept letting off steam. Keep calm, Percy, said Annie, and take your time, added Clarabelle. But Percy was still over-eager as he puffed away. He whistled loudly at every station. Peep, peep! Get in quickly, please! The passengers didn't like being rushed, nor did Annie and Clarabelle. They reached the junction just as Thomas arrived. Not bad, remarked Thomas loftily. I hope you'll be as reliable as this every day. Of course, puffed Percy. You wait and see. Before long, it was time to leave. The guard blew his whistle, and Percy took off like a rocket. Slow down, warned the coaches, but Percy wouldn't listen. As he rounded a bend, there was trouble. Some careless sheep had strayed onto the line. I'll show him, huffed Percy, and he blew steam at them. The frightened sheep scampered out of the way. Suddenly, Percy began to slow down. At the next station, he felt tired and out of breath. You've used up too much steam, said the driver. We'll have to wait until you've built up more before we can go on. Oh dear, sighed Percy, and things were going so well too. Soon, he had enough puff to set off again. But he was late when they reached the top station. We told you to calm down, scolded Annie and Clarabelle. There was no need to hurry at all. Percy felt silly. I'm sorry, I was only trying to please Thomas. After all, he's been running his branch line for years. Annie and Clarabelle were surprised. No, he hasn't. Thomas has a lot to learn himself. He's made far more mistakes than you have. You'll do well, Percy, so long as you don't rush and pay attention. I'll try, promised Percy. When the big engines were let out again, everyone returned to their usual jobs. Well, Percy, said Thomas, I hope you've learned a thing or two about branch lines. Oh, I have, grinned Percy. Annie and Clarabelle have been very helpful indeed. And he hurried off to the yard, leaving Thomas speechless.